Coming up on 5-Minute News. Six dead in mass shooting at Chicago July 4th parade. Akron imposes curfew after protests over police murder of Jalen Walker. And after Supreme Court ruling, new focus on state's environmental powers. It's Tuesday, July 5. I'm Anthony Davis. A gunman on a rooftop opened fire on an Independence Day parade in suburban Chicago on Monday, killing at least six people, wounding at least 30, and sending hundreds of marchers, parents with strollers and children on bicycles fleeing in terror, police said. Authorities said a 22-year-old man, named as a person of interest in the shooting, was taken into police custody on Monday evening after an hours-long manhunt. The July 4th shooting was just the latest to shatter the rituals of American life. Schools, churches, grocery stores and now community parades have all become killing grounds in recent months. This time, the bloodshed came as the nation tried to find cause to celebrate its founding and the bonds that just about still hold it together. It is devastating that a celebration of America was ripped apart by our uniquely American plague, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker said at a news conference. I'm furious because it does not have to be this way. While we celebrate the 4th of July just once a year, mass shootings have become a weekly American tradition. The shooting occurred at a spot on the parade route where many residents had staked out prime viewing points early in the day for the annual celebration. Dozens of fired bullets sent hundreds of parade goers, some visibly blooded, fleeing. The Highland Park police chief said a police officer pulled over 22 year old Robert E. Cremo III about five miles north of the shooting scene, several hours after police released the man's photo and an image of his silver Honda and warned the public that he was likely armed and dangerous. The Ohio city of Akron declared a state of emergency on Monday, setting a curfew and cancelling Independence Day fireworks after protests over the police killing of an unarmed black man turned unruly on Sunday night. The protests broke out after police released body camera video that showed eight officers shooting at Jalen Walker as he fled a traffic stop last week. Walker's body was found to have 60 gunshot wounds. Daytime protests on Sunday were peaceful, but despite pleas from the Walker family that demonstrations remain peaceful, Akron police declared an unlawful assembly once property was damaged. Officers in riot gear fired about a dozen canisters of tear gas to scatter protesters. Akron Mayor Dan Horrigan said a curfew for downtown Akron was in effect from 9pm to 6am until further notice, and a pair of 4th of July fireworks displays were also cancelled. The Jalen Walker shooting marks the latest in a series of police killings of unarmed black men, raising questions about police use of force and equal justice for African Americans, and contributing to increased polarization in the United States. The mayor praised the peaceful protests, which were led by the Akron chapter of the NAACP. Hundreds of demonstrators marched in the streets of the city of about 200,000 people, waving Black Lives Matter flags and chanting, We are done dying, and justice for Jalen. The US Supreme Court limited the power of the federal government to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from existing power plants, but its ruling didn't touch the power of the states. That's putting a renewed focus on efforts across the country to limit the reliance on power plants that spew planet-warming emissions into the air. While Democratic states have taken the lead on the most aggressive climate policy in recent years, some Republican-led states are also helping shift the US power grid toward cleaner sources of energy. This ruling makes clear that the actions of governors and state legislatures are more important than ever. Thankfully, state authority to curb greenhouse gas emissions has not changed. Democratic governors Jay Inslee of Washington, Kathy Hochul of New York and Gavin Newsom of California said in a statement after the ruling. 
The three are co-chairs of the U.S. Climate Alliance, a group of 24 states committed to climate action. California, New York and Washington are all known for setting some of the nation's most ambitious climate goals. All three have committed to getting 100% of their electric power from non-carbon sources by 2040 or 2045. So-called renewable portfolio standards don't directly regulate emissions, but they have a similar effect by encouraging utilities not to purchase power from carbon-emitting sources like coal-fired plants. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.